G'day there guys, Marky here, back at it again with another episode of r slash relationship advice. Now if you love this content, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, a like on the video, and enjoy the bloody good stuff that's going to happen today. I don't know what, but tell me what you would do in these situations. Posted by user throwra07280, titled, I, 31 female, suspect my new boyfriend, 32 male, may be female to male post-op. How do I let him know that that's not a deal breaker and I want to be with him? So I've been seeing a new guy for a few weeks now, and he's absolutely wonderful. Our personalities mesh so well, we both have a similar sense of humor, and we both seem to agree on the big things in a relationship. Similar financial views, birth child free, etc. We've had several deep, serious, and frank conversations about sex, what we like and dislike, our histories, because of some past missteps in relationships. I'm enjoying the fact that we're taking things slow and getting to know each other so well before getting more physical. Taken on their own, each of several things he's told me in these conversations wouldn't even faze me, but together, I suspect he may have transitioned from female to male. He has an eating disorder, and the typical meds do not work. He may be able to get surgery one day for an implant to allow erections. He takes monthly testosterone injections. Several years ago, he had some sort of chest surgery that severed nerve endings to his upper chest region and nipples. He has dealt with anorexia, depression, and anxiety in the past, and still has depression that is well controlled. Again, on their own, none of these would make me wonder. But together, along with his general personality and some mannerisms, I wonder if he has transitioned from female to male. I will make this plan. Whether he is or is not trans, I very much want to pursue our relationship. I've never met anyone that makes me feel as wonderful as he does. He makes me want to do better, be better. He challenges me and lifts me up. He's kind, funny, and sexy as hell. I am falling in love with him. Without making him uncomfortable, how do I let him know that it's okay if he is trans, and that he can trust me with that information without jeopardizing our relationship. Edit, thank you all for the support and advice. To those who chose to pass judgment or go off on tangents about trapping me and completely ignoring the question at hand, I'm sorry this subject seems to have triggered a negative response in you. To the rest of you who posted kind, uplifting advice and raised good points I hadn't even considered, thank you for the guidance. Best of luck and love to everyone. Hopefully, I'll have an update down the road for y'all. Tales of Ba Sing Slay says, I would just continue to be the loving person that you are until he feels ready to tell you. Since it's not a deal breaker, there is no rush. I totally get wanting to rush ahead so that he feels as comfortable as possible as fast as possible, but the confusion you could cause if you're wrong makes me hesitant. There is also the possibility that she's not wrong, but that bringing it up actively could be a trigger for her boyfriend. It could be very damaging to his self-esteem and increase his dysphoria to be sussed out unexpectedly. Very valid point. I'll definitely leave it up to him when and if to tell me. I don't know how much social media you do and don't use, but sharing an LGBTQ plus ally post or making your own ally post may make your significant other more willing to bring it up because they see you're actively trying to be a safe person for all LGBTQ+. That way, you're not outing them, but you're setting a positive tone for if and when the conversation arises. Good idea. Maybe donate a few bucks to one of those things on Facebook or something. That way the partner knows you stand behind that and you aren't directly calling anyone out, and on top of that, you are helping others. Something I've seen suggested in the past to people, when they want to come out but aren't sure if it's safe, is to test the waters by bringing up conversations related to their identity and watch the reaction. For example, did you hear that country is considering making it easier for people to transition? What do you think about that? What you could try is a similar tactic. Bring up trans people in the abstract and vocalize support. It's kind of, I don't know, less pressure on him that way? Assuming you're right, and he is trans of course, it gives an indication that you hold trans positive views, and therefore would be less likely to react poorly if he came out to you, without making it obvious you like, suspect anything. 
which can be a source of anxiety in itself, depending on the person. I would try to phrase it a bit more subtly than my example though. It's just the best my aggressively unsubtle ass can come up with. And OP says, yeah, subtlety isn't traditionally my strong suit either. I've been told that I have the delicate touch of a sledgehammer, so I'll wait until a suitable situation arises and play it off. Thank you. I wouldn't be so quick to jump to this conclusion. Phalloplasty is extremely rare, and the results are quite obvious. If it looks exactly like a regular dick, it's most likely not phalloplasty. Also, lots of cis men take testosterone for other issues. OP says, I know he has a penis. We were laughing about guys sending dick pics as a greeting, and he mentioned having an attractive penis. I also know he plans to get naked with me at some point, but we both want to take our time getting there. That said, you could very well be right. There could be other equally valid reasons for all things I listed. Regardless, he is a truly fantastic human being, and I hope he's in my life for a long time to come. Insert girly sigh in Google eyes. Update, I suspect my new boyfriend may be female to male transgender. Summary so far. Because of some medical information disclosed to me by him, I believed my new boyfriend was post-op transgender, female to male. You wonderful folks encouraged me to continue being supportive and open, and to let him come out to me at his own leisure. Shortly after my original post, I sent him a text letting him know that I'm really into him, and short of the R word, murder, or animal abuse, there wasn't much he could tell me that would scare me away. In person, our conversations were wonderful and deep, and funny and flirty and fun. Then he'd go days and days without texting, calling, or anything. I wrote this off as him being busy. He's a first responder with a crazy schedule, and mostly just let it go. But something felt off. I told him if he wasn't interested anymore, that was fine, and he could just tell me. Honestly, I can handle rejection pretty well. He got very defensive and asked where I'd get that idea. After a particularly bad storm blew through our area, I texted him to check in, make sure he and his family were okay, etc. I got a series of one-word responses and asked if everything was okay, or if I'd done something to upset him. He said no, he just had a lot on his mind. I told him that was fine, and that I understood, and that my anxiety was getting the best of me. I again said that if he needed to vent or talk or be distracted, I was there for him. I also told him though that I just needed to know that he was still interested in seeing me. I got no response for hours. So I told him that was fine, that I wished him the best, and that if he ever wanted to try again to hit me up. He sent me, okay. It really tore me up. I felt so close to him, and in person everything was so good. Flash forward a few days, and I was talking to a friend about the situation. Turns out she knows him. When I mentioned his name, she interjected, God, no! Much to my confusion. I'm at least the third woman he's done this with. Gets really close, really fast, then basically drops off. So, no clue what his issue is, but I'm sorry he doesn't feel like he can trust me, or anyone else. That said, I can't spend my life waiting for him to be ready. Oh well, easy come, easy go. What a crappy situation. I'm sorry you were on that emotional roller coaster. I will say that you sounded like a very kind and caring person. You were thoughtful to figure out the best way to approach the situation you perceived you were in, and had it been what you thought, I think the person on the other end would feel comforted and assured that you were a safe person to disclose that information to. I'm sorry this guy sucks at life and you got duped, but there's someone else out there that will really respect and treasure your thoughtfulness. And OP says, eh, I figure it's his loss more than mine. Thank you so much. My search continues. Oh gosh, based on what you've told us, my narcissist red alarms are going off, and it sounds like you escaped a toxic relationship. I believe so. Glad I didn't waste much time with it. Blair and Nine says, Wish I could meet a girl as supportive as you. I read your original post and felt for both sides. I'm a trans guy myself, and it's scary to let the other person know, especially if you are getting close and attached to them. 
because I feel like I'm going to get dropped and my heart broken again. Really sucks that it ended up this way for you. I'm really sorry, but you sound like an amazing human being, and I hope the best for your future search for a partner. Cheers, and have a good life. Keep being such a wonderful and caring human. Makes life a bit less scary since there is people out there who care about us. OP says, I can't even imagine how terrifying it must be to get into a relationship with someone you don't know if you can trust. I mean, all relationships are essentially that, but not everyone has as much reason to be afraid. I hope you find love and peace and acceptance, and that no one ever breaks that wonderful heart of yours again. Posted by user Throw RA Sad Fiance 2020, titled My fiance's ex sent me their sex tapes, and I made the terrible mistake of watching it. So, my fiance, 27 male, and I, 29 female, just got engaged a week ago. I proposed to him when I heard out from our friends that he was sad that his proposal plans were ruined by the pandemic. We have been very happy this past week. I guess this caught the attention of his bitter ex, 28 female. She contacted me on SM and sent me a few videos and said that even though I may be marrying him, I would never be able to satisfy him sexually the way she did. For some background, early on in our relationship, I was a bit insecure about this ex, especially how attractive she was, but my fiancé assured me that he would never, ever consider being with her again because she was abusive and used to force him into things he did not like. I soon grew out of these insecurities because my fiancé was an amazing boyfriend and always made me feel loved and very secure. But the ex's message brought back all these insecurities, and I decided to watch the videos she sent. It was a huge mistake. I've never seen my fiancé so passionate and vocal during sex with me. She even had a video of her giving him a BJ in a public place. I never knew he was into all that stuff. I got really upset and decided to check if he had kept any of these videos on his phone. Turns out he hadn't kept any of them, but I found out messages discussing them with his best friend Sarah. Apparently his ex had sent these tapes to him as well to remind him how good it was between them. He had deleted them right away and blocked her, but was debating whether or not to tell me about this and thus asked Sarah's advice. The conversation somehow turned into Sarah asking who was better sexually. My fiancé tried to evade the question, but she pressured the issue for some reason. It looked like she was teasing him and being playful, but after a while, he got mad and sent her a mini rant. The important gist of it was basically this. If you look at it from purely a physical perspective, then yeah, X was better. She was more my type physically and sexually. She was very aggressive and passionate, and always took the initiative which I liked, and she gave one hell of a BJ. But she was also abusive, and towards the end, she started using sex as a tool and instead of feeling loved, it became a desperate attempt for me to connect with her. Sex with OP made me realize that sex was not just about the physical aspect. I feel loved and secure and happy when I'm with her. Even if she's less my type compared to X, the emotional connection means that sex is automatically great. Although the second half of this rant somehow saves it, I still feel really hurt by his admission that sex was better with her. He did tell me that he liked me being aggressive and taking initiative, and I do try to be more like that, but once things started happening, I end up becoming more passive and let him take the lead. I know I can try being more aggressive, but I'm afraid I can never be as good as her, and I can never be that kind of girl that can give public BJs. Now I wonder if he settled for me despite not enjoying sex as much with me. Logically, I know I don't have to be the best at everything for my fiancé, but it hurts because he is the best boyfriend I've ever had in all aspects that I can think of, and I always thought our sex life was amazing. Now I feel like I just got lucky because I was the first person he dated after that abusive POS, and the bar was set so low that he decided our relationship was amazing enough to make up for that I was not as good at sex as she was. I feel sad and hurt, and I don't know what to do. The ex managed to ruin what was supposed to be one of the happiest periods of my life. 
I don't know how to bring this up to my fiance without sounding like a nut with no self-control who thought it was a good idea to watch the videos and snoop on his phone. Majestic Indigo says, These feelings are what she was shooting for. She wanted to hurt you and you're letting her. Those videos and her are his past and it should stay there. You are his future. There is more to a good relationship than sex and you have it. You have what she wants. Don't let her take it away. What she did is a crime called revenge porn, and you should call the police. If OP's fiancé wasn't aware of these videos being taken, then it's revenge porn. If OP's fiancé recorded the videos himself, then it may violate copyright laws. If fiancé's ex recorded the videos with his consent, then she can legally do whatever she wants with them now, as long as she doesn't distribute them to minors or violate any kind of court-ordered separation, such as a restraining order. At least in my country, revenge porn is also sharing consensual taken material without the approval of the subject. Just a stupid thought on the off chance it could help you? Think about whether instead of talking about sex, they had been talking about cooking, and your fiancé admitted, when pressed, that yes, she made better burgers than you, but he also loves how you make the burgers, and the more he loves you, the more he loves it, and he loves how you two do it together, how you spend time together in the kitchen, how you enjoy the meal together. The fact that cooking isn't held over him, but is something you do together as a couple, and that he wouldn't have it any other way. Of course, sex naturally is a far more vulnerable point for us because it's so intimate, but I wanted to throw this out there in case it could help you see things in a different way. To make this analogy further, think of it like she makes a mean beef burger, but you make amazing pasta or something. Every man loves a great beef burger, and it makes us feel manly, but there's nothing like the sweetness of home-cooked pasta made by someone you truly love. It makes you feel all warm and fuzzy and puts a smile on your face. You can have a meal like that every day and never get tired of it, and while you may think from time to time, hey, that was an awesome burger, I had that one time, you know you wouldn't trade the amazing home cook pasta for the burger at all. Edit, as I'm getting some traction and I'm loving this analogy, thank you, today is August 10, I want to take it further. When you were younger, you thought eating burgers all the time was awesome. As you get older, you start getting into finer dining. You develop a more sophisticated palate as you go from eating beer and burgers to enjoying grilled salmon and wild rice with a glass of red wine. You find someone who can make these kinds of meals for you, and very quickly, you realize you enjoy this way more than the burgers. The burgers seemed delicious at the time because you had nothing else to compare them to. Now when you think back, you realize that while those burgers were awesome, they did kind of make you feel gross afterwards, and you can't imagine enjoying those kinds of greasy burgers anymore. You realize how you don't have to eat like an animal, and you don't have to eat all the time, in public, to be able to enjoy food. And you are thankful that when you get home every day after a long day at work, you are not expected to eat a burger, but there's always a fresh, warm plate waiting for you cooked with love and compassion. As time goes by, you realize one day that you haven't even thought of that burger for years, and now I'm feeling hungry. Update, my fiancé's ex sent me their sex tapes, and I made the terrible mistake of watching it. As for the update, after posting here and reading the advice and reflecting on my actions, I realized what I did was wrong and a violation of my fiancé's privacy. I allowed my insecurities to dictate my actions, even though my fiancé is okay with me using his phone. My intent to snoop made what I did wrong, so I decided to just come clean. I sat him down the next day and told him that the ex sent me the videos as well, and also came clean about the snooping. He was pretty upset, but surprisingly he wasn't that upset with the snooping. He seemed more upset that his ex had somehow managed to cause drama once again in his life. He told me that he hadn't watched any of the videos, because in a majority of them, he was uncomfortable with recording them, and only did it for her, and was afraid if watching it made me look at him in a bad way. This made me feel even crappier for what I did, and I apologized again, and reassured him that they did in no way lessen my feelings or respect for him. I wanted him to have some time to process things, and decide what to do about the ex, and what I did. 
so I gave him some space. That night, I decided to cook his favorite meal as a sort of apology dinner and discuss things. He seemed in a much better mood. He apologized to me for not telling me about the tapes right away and for being an idiot and not realizing that she would come after me when he had blocked her. He told me that he appreciated me coming clean about the snooping and understood how I got carried away and that I could have just talked to him and he would have given me his phone and reassured me that he hadn't kept any of the videos. I asked if he was going to press charges regarding revenge porn, and he told me that he wanted nothing to do with her, and that we should just move on and enjoy our engagement, and forget about the whole thing. I told him it was completely his choice, and I support him and would delete the videos and block her right away. Finally, I brought up the texts, and he apologized to me for the rant. He told me that was the first time in a long time that he'd actually thought about who was better, and that he had never actively compared me with any of his exes before. He told me he should have just answered it with a simple, my fiancé is better, and then tried to apologize again. I told him that he didn't have to sugarcoat anything, and that it was his private conversation with a friend, and I have no right to be mad when he really wasn't disrespectful about me or our sex life. I also told him that it was okay if she was better, and I didn't have to be the best at everything. He explained to me that after talking to Sarah, he thought more about it, and that he hadn't really expressed his thoughts well in the text, but he would like to explain it better. You are the best I have ever had. I am not lying or sugarcoating anything. If someone asked me who is the most skilled or the most adventurous sexual partner that I had, then yeah, it would probably be her. But that doesn't really matter because if someone had asked me what was the best sex I've ever had, my first thought would be the time when we had sex right after you asked me to marry you, and then it would be the night when you first told me that you loved me, and third would be the time when we had sex in the kitchen the day I moved in. For all her skill and experience, she couldn't even make in the top three, and we have the rest of our lives to make sure that she doesn't even come near the top 100. So no, I'm not lying when I say you're the best I've had. I'm not gonna lie. Despite what I said about not needing to be the best, just hearing what he said, maybe I butchered the quote, he was so much more charming and eloquent, made me really happy. So I kissed him and asked if he wanted to try and break into the top three again. Then we had sex, smiley face. I didn't really specifically try to be more aggressive, but I tried to focus more on what he was feeling to reassure myself that he was enjoying it as much as I did. That naturally allowed me to be the one in the lead, and it was great. I could tell that he really enjoyed it as well. I know I have to work on my insecurities and potentially see a therapist, but for now I will try my best to just forget about what I saw in those videos and enjoy being engaged to the most amazing man I know. P.S. I appreciate the harsh comments that told me I was wrong to snoop. But those of you that sent me hateful PMs telling me that I was no better than his ex and that I should leave him? Seriously, F off. I may be an insecure nut sometimes, but I have never taken it out on him and would never hurt him like she did. And me wanting to be the best sex he had is not some narcissistic ego trip. It was because to me, he is the best sex I have ever had and hopefully ever will. And I wanted to be the same for him. I don't think there is anything wrong with that. Posted by user throw ra don't know two, titled "My 33 male wife, 32 female, said her ex's name while we were having sex." My wife and I have been married for four years, and we have a two-year-old. We dated on and off for three years before getting married. Last night, she says her ex's name while we're having sex. She gave some weird excuse as to why. She said it's a common name, it is a very common name, and must have heard it recently. And I wasn't going to start a big argument with her at that time. It has since gotten me worried about why she did that. For some background, this was a guy she was with a couple years before I met her. They met in college and were serious for some time. They had broken up when I met her and decided they were better as friends. They were friends for years before they dated. We started dating, but he remained in the picture. He was her best friend first and foremost, and I grudgingly went along with it for her. 
Several months passed and I put my foot down, saying it's too uncomfortable for me. There was some resistance, but she steps back from him. Every time we broke up, she was with him. We finally reconciled and got engaged. He apparently didn't know this and stops talking to her. She was devastated, which should have been a red flag. We talked about it and she was happy to have chosen me. Now after this has happened, I'm tempted to see if she's gotten back in contact with him again. I know she's checked in on his social media because I saw the searches on the laptop. She doesn't know I know that, and I don't think she would cheat, but this guy was always different for her. Do I just confront her? Do I start going through her phone, or am I just being paranoid? Too late now, but this is the type of girl you walk away from when all these red flags show themselves during the dating stage. Instead, you married her. Well, at least you know who she is thinking of when you were fudging her. I would be very curious to know when the last contact was. She's still searching him on social media, means she's probably not over him. I would look into everything. OP says, I'm very curious too as to when they last had contact. It's really disappointing to know that's who she's thinking of. Yeah. It's odd that she would just blurt out the name of someone she hasn't seen or had emotional connections with in years. I would definitely be more than curious about this. It could be that she's just been thinking about him lately and wondering about the road not traveled. Not exactly great, but not quite cheating. Check his social media. If it looks like he's married with kids too, that's a positive sign. Is he still in your area? If he doesn't live anywhere near you, then that makes physical cheating less likely. If he's single and in your area, then some very, very subtle snooping into her chat, apps, and phone messaging might be something to think about. If you two had just started dating and this happened, I could see it. But out of the blue after years of marriage and kids, that just seems damn odd. I think because for me it appears out of the blue is why I suspect there's more happening. It would make more sense she's at the very least talking to him again. He's currently single and lives in the area still. My next step is to try to do the snooping for any solid proof. Update. My wife said her ex's name while we were having sex. Thank you to everyone for your help and advice. I did my investigating before talking to her. I went through his social media first, but nothing explicitly saying anything was going on. There were a few mentions of his love in some comments, but that could mean anything. I did look at the phone bill, and there looks to be calls with him pretty regularly. On to hers, I was able to get onto her phone when she was asleep. She must have forgot I knew the code. Nothing in texts, and no weird calls, so she deleted them. I did find some apps she tried to keep hidden, like Snapchat and Kick. Sure enough, there is their conversations, and pictures. I took pictures of all of it on my phone to have as proof. She exploded when we had the conversation and left with our child to her mother's. I contacted a lawyer and am in the process of a divorce and figuring out custody. I'm heartbroken and am more angry than anything else. I'm angry at her, but I'm also angry at myself for dismissing so many red flags. Edit to add, the conversations I found were confirming they were having an affair. The pictures were ones they were exchanging, including nudes. And Doodly Woodley says, I'm glad you have resolution and wish you good luck with a divorce. Thank you. It'll be worth it in the end. Don't feel bad about missing red flags. You give the people you love the benefit of the doubt because you trust them, and she betrayed that trust. So don't go blaming yourself because you didn't do anything wrong. She did. This. As a survivor of an extremely emotionally and mentally abusive relationship, yeah, extra feel this. It's so bloody important to not blame yourself. There is absolutely nothing wrong with wanting to see the best in people and choosing to love someone and trust them. And don't stop doing that just because she did this. Someone will do it for you too. Love heart.
Alright guys, that's where I'm going to end today's video. I really do hope you enjoyed it, and maybe even learned something that you didn't know before. If you haven't already, please do feel free to click that like button, as it really does help me in the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't already, and you love today's video, please feel free to subscribe. I would love it a lot. Also, big, big, big shout out to all my Patreon members and channel subscribers. You guys are all up on the screen right now. I love you. I love your faces. Also, I love seeing you guys all chatting down below in the comments comments, it brightens my day to see the stories that you guys share and just the kind words you guys always have for my videos, as well as everyone else in the videos, I love you too. But honestly, your ongoing support means the world to me, and I just love it so much that you guys were able to support a career for myself that I invest so much time into. And you guys honestly motivate me to work harder each and every day to put more love into the videos for you guys. If you guys have watched this far in the video and you haven't already subscribed on Patreon or become a channel member, that's cool, you don't have to, but there are links down below. Uh, you can donate any amount of money, pledge that any month, cancel whenever, I'm completely cool with it. It's just there for you to support me if you'd like to go the extra mile. And I'll go the extra mile for you guys by putting out new amazing content every single day. With that said guys, I really hope you have a good day, night, sleep, bath, time at work, whatever you're up to today. This has been Marky, I'll see you in the next amazing video. Bye.